10 it. It's actually a lot of fun. So it is a zombie run, I believe. Well, they give you your choice. Time. If you want to dress up, you can. If not, then you don't have to. I mean, but remember, it is a family-friendly event. <laughs> exactly, so that's the yes. Thing. Well, Erica, what's that check of what they're looking like this half hour? Well, we have another event happening, and that is the San Benito County Fair. That takes place today into the weekend. We are going to see some scattered showers out there this weekend, but today's looking pretty nice. It'll just be gusty at times and a little warmer on Sunday with a few clouds lingering on Sunday as well. But it should be, besides tomorrow, a fairly nice day out there today and Sunday for that county fair. Uh, we are going to see those lingering showers in the Sunday but then as we head into next week it is sunshine 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 and warmer temperatures we're really going to see that warm-up happening for our interior locations well above average temperatures reaching those 90s by Wednesday entertainment tonight weeknights at 7 on KION news channel 46 I'm pastor Todd Anderson from Compass Church in Salinas each Sunday at Compass is a powerful and uplifting experience for the entire family. And I want to personally invite you to come worship with us and be a part of what God is doing in our community. Dream it, design it, create it. Join Chevron, MCOE, and the Fab Foundation for an afternoon of dreaming, designing, and creating at the official launch of the Central Coast Mobile Fab Lab. Saturday, October 14th, 12 to 3 p.m., Constitution Soccer Complex, Salinas. Enjoy hands-on learning and play activities, food trucks, jump houses, and a live broadcast from K-Don Radio. Inspirational learning in an interactive space for kids and parents presented by Chevron. Register at Eventbrite today. Create a backyard that's out of this world. Right now, save $30 on the GTA 26 handheld battery pruner. Real steel. Find yours. Wilson's Plumbing and Heating. We've been in business since 1941, and we couldn't have done it without your support. For nine decades, the Wilson's family has proudly called the Monterey Peninsula our home, offering the same red carpet treatment you've grown to trust. Founder Al Wilson started the business in 1941, stressing the importance of customer service and applying cutting-edge technology. Years later, those same values are being carried out by Gary and George Wilson. Wilson's Plumbing and Heating, serving our community since 1941. In 10 years, Lisa Schneider will have an amazing second act. Thanks to career reskilling courses from AARP to help make sure her income lives as long as she does. The younger you are, the more you need AARP. KION News Channel 46 starts now with breaking news. Good Friday morning to you. We begin this half hour with breaking news this morning. We just learned and we are continuing to follow on that story that U.S. Senator Dianne Feinstein has passed away. Our Carl Cook live for us now in studio breaking down the details. Carl, you've been following this. What are you learning? So according to two CBS sources, Senator Feinstein was 90 years old at the time of her passing. Recent health issues have caused her to be away from Washington. Now, Feinstein served in the Senate longer than any other woman in American history. During her time, she took on wide-ranging issues like LGBTQ rights, the environment, and gun laws. After failing to be California governor, she won a special election for a Senate seat in 1992, where five additional terms followed. Now, Feinstein was actually set to retire from the Senate after her term next year. Anna, back to you. All right, thank you so much for that, Carl. And again, we will be on top of the story both on air and online. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis held a private fundraising event in Monterey County and as promised his arrival came with protests from those who fight for farm worker rights. Now I did speak with those protesters as well as the leader of the Monterey County Republican Party. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis visiting the Central Coast. Ag leaders in Monterey County welcoming the presidential candidate while others not so much. Protesters standing across the entrance of Corral de Tierra, holding signs and making their message clear. We're going to protect our people at all costs, and we need to do that. And we need all leaders, big leaders from anywhere, from companies and assembly and state and federal to protect our people. Several who drove by honked in support. 
and not, it's just not anti-immigrant, it's also women rights. It's also, also LGBTQIA rights. It's also basic human rights that he's standing against. And so we're, we're really asking people to support each other and support basic human rights. I think right now in today's environment, I think any move politically is going to cause a backlash and a lot of fear, just like you see today. Here at the Corral de Tierra Country Club, you can see right across the entrance, Monterey County Sheriff is posted up front here. Jeff Gorman is the Republican Party chair for Monterey County. He has a different take. We want the same things. We want a healthy community. We want to take care of our children. We want to be kept safe from crime. And uh, we don't want our children to be exposed to drugs or sexual perversion. Gorman supports the business leaders that invited the presidential candidate to Monterey County. I think they're being unfairly attacked. And it's, it's a shame because these people are the people who create jobs, make the money flow here. KION reached out several times to the agricultural executives listed as hosts for DeSantis's visit. We are working on getting a response. Now, I did also try to speak with Governor DeSantis about his visit to Monterey County, but his press team told me that he was unavailable. Earlier this week, Salina City Council voted to denounce DeSantis's visit to the area. And with his attendance came some safety concerns. Now, we spoke with the Monterey County Sheriff's Office about this event. Sheriff Tina Nieto says their job is not necessarily to protect one person, but to keep the overall peace in the community, pointing out that the department is there to protect everyone's rights. So what I want to tell the viewers is that if there's any type of protest and we are called um, because of the protest, we are there just to keep the peace. They disagree about things, but um, our job in the sheriff's, if it happens in, in the sheriff's jurisdiction, is primarily to keep the peace. Sheriff's office says a few vehicles did drive onto the private property of the event, honking and causing a disturbance. But when deputies approached those vehicles, they complied and left the property. There were no other incidents related to DeSantis's visit. Fast food workers will be getting a raise next year, and Governor Gavin Newsom signed a bill that raises the minimum wage to $20 an hour for fast food employees. The pay bump goes into effect on April 1st. California's current minimum wage is $15.50 an hour, and this bill will bump that up to $16 on January 1st. It also creates a council to oversee future wage increases and workplace regulations. There are more than 550,000 fast food workers in California. This morning, a San Francisco utility worker is dead after a trench collapsed under a sidewalk and crews worked to rescue him for hours before it turned into a recovery effort. The San Francisco Fire Department says several people were doing utility work underground when that trench came crumbling. Five escaped, but the last one was trapped under eight feet of dirt and debris. Several other agencies also stepped in to help with the recovery efforts to free the worker from all that rubble. Their identity has not yet been released at this time. This morning, a man safe and sound after he went missing for days in the Angeles National Forest. L.A. County deputies first found an abandoned vehicle late Wednesday night. Then on Thursday morning, they found the 46-year-old had fallen 200 feet down a cliff. A drone spotted the man, and a helicopter was able to hoist him to safety soon after. Deputies say that he was in a lot of pain when they found him and likely wouldn't have survived another day. Time now, 6.35, taking a live look this morning from our Salinas cam, where people getting ready to start their day. We can see 101 as people head north on the freeway, but it looks a little hazy out there, Erica, a bit cloudy. I know you're talking about some wet weather um, affecting your weekend plans, we possibly. definitely have some wet weather that's going to impact your plans this Saturday. It will be a little nicer on Sunday with maybe a few lingering showers early, but as we head into Sunday afternoon, it should be a little nicer. Hey, we were looking out to the west, but how about we take a view to the east where we are starting to see those sunrise colors happening this morning. Sunrise, though, not officially until 7.01 a.m., so we still got just shy of a half an hour before that sun is actually up and greeting us this Friday morning. We are seeing a few patchy low clouds out there around the coast. These were a bit more widespread about a half an hour ago. They are starting to break up a bit. Where they have been consistent throughout the morning is around the eastern portion of the bay, so Marina,
into Watsonville. We've actually had some fog reports coming out of the Watsonville area heading into Aptos. We're also seeing those low clouds filling into the Salinas Valley as well. But again, they're going to be patchy. We are going to see a bit more sun as we start the day, but then we will have some increasing clouds later on this afternoon. If you're heading out the door, temperatures are running cooler this morning compared to yesterday morning. We're in those low to mid 50s around the coast, mainly low 50s for the Salinas Valley. Hollister up into the Santa Clara Valley as well. Some of our sheltered valleys have actually dipped into those up mid to upper 40s this morning. So we do have some chilly temperatures out there and we are certainly going to cool down as we head into tomorrow. It's not just rain we got to talk about. But anyway, first, let's take you out the door here. Live look where we are seeing some of those foggy conditions. This is just outside of the Watsonville area on Highway 1 there as you're heading into Santa Cruz. This is where we're getting those fog reports and you can see it is a bit foggy in that area. Now we are seeing some fog reports as well around Marina, but it's not super dense. So some good news there for that morning commute. A celebration in downtown Salinas Thursday evening. The Siembra Latinos Fund is encouraging and reminding people about the importance of investing in their community. Our Veronica Macias shows us. In Monterey County, Latinos make up more than half of the population. La gente Latina are a majority, yet still face barriers. For that reason, leaders of the Siembra Latinos Fund, a component of the Community Foundation for Monterey County, están sembrando. They are sowing seeds of philanthropy by and for Latinos around the Central Coast. We are a, a, a substantial population. We, we fulfill a substantial group of the local population. And so servicing the local Latino community is really servicing the entire community because if one portion of the community grows, then we all grow together. Going on its sixth year, leaders of the Siembra Latinos Fund have handed out an estimated $100,000 in grants to nonprofits in various fields, education, mental health, and more. For example, last year, a STEM program for girls at El Sausal Middle School received a check for $20,000. It just feels that we're being embraced. By this year, the fund's advisory board members are raising a toast to a man who is a champion for affordable housing in Monterey County. Hi, I'm Alfred Diaz Infante. I'm the Alfred Diaz Infante is the son of immigrant farm workers who was devoted to making his community better. Tragically, he died in a car accident back in 2021. The Siembra Latinos Fund now announcing their inaugural Alfred Diaz Infante Award for those who make a difference by using their position and influence in the community to advance positive change and elevate the lives of Latinos within Monterey County. I am absolutely honored uh, and humbled. People like Dr. Ernesto Vela, who is the Assistant Superintendent of Student Services for Monterey County Office of Education. I try in my best, uh, whether as an educator, as a community leader, or just as an advocate for students uh, to uh, support them to reach their fullest um, potential. Having served as an elementary school teacher, principal, administrator, and program director, along with being a team leader for the Salinas Valley Dream Academy, Dr. Vela says in all of his experiences, his motivation has been to build positive influences around our area youth, having people who can help guide them to a path of success and reminds them about the responsibility of paying it forward. My strongest message to young people that no matter what you decide to do in life, that you leave a little ounce of space in your life to give back to your community uh, because there are other people like yourself that are coming behind you and it's so important that for us to reach out a hand and help you know that next generation and Again, Chambre Latinos is a field of interest fund of the Community Foundation for Monterey County, which provides financial stewardship, administrative support, and the services of a fully accredited community foundation held to rigorous national standards. Time now, 640. Who says you have to be a kid to play some double dutch? Well, straight ahead, how a small group of double dutch and adults brought thousands back to this game from their youth. Plus, glaciers in Switzerland are melting alarmingly fast. But let's get you out the door with our Erica Bertini.